Hey, what's up, guys? This is video number 22 in the Ableton Live 10 Ultimate Tutorial Series. This video is entitled Dynamics Processors in Use. I feel that it would be very important to go over the use cases and scenarios that you would actually use these Dynamics Processors. We kind of understand uh, the basic general theory of how they work we need to understand why we would apply them to any particular signal and the thing that i want you to kind of repeat in your head as you know this video goes on and for the rest of your uh music making journey is it's not what things sound like by themselves it's what everything sounds like all together so i have a uh, basic kind of house beat thing going on here and we're going to do some dynamics processing to them Right. All well and good. Let's start off with our the first one we looked at, which would be the gate. I'm going to add the gate to these uh, hi-hats here. And if we look at them, we'll notice that these are, you know, heavily uh, processed already. And, you know, again, it's kind of what it sounds like. I guess, uh, all together, not separately. Like, this sounds pretty cool by itself, but it's, it's a little bit uh, too busy. And this is something that I struggled with. I struggled with not kind of understanding, I guess, subtlety and headroom and not having, like, walls of percussion everywhere. We get the idea. We don't need all this stuff going on. And we'll get a cleaner and tighter mix if we do it that way. So a gate is essentially, you know, letting things poke through that go above the threshold. And then once it goes below, it will kind of tone it down. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of what that is doing there. So I'm going to open up the, yeah, I'll open up the signalizer. And I'm just going to briefly, yeah, I'm just going to go through it. Right. So already, you know, we're, we're getting a, a sound and a couple of very important controls that you need to know are, you know, of course, the threshold, attack, hold and release. So the attack, what on what would you use a fast attack and on what would you use a slower attack? Well, a fast attack, you want that gate to open right away. Right to get those um, those those hi hats to kind of poke through to to you know have it sound like a hi hat. So for percussive and um, you know kicks, drums, hi hat, all, all sorts of percussive, um, very fast, uh, transient um, signals, you'd want a fast attack. For things like I guess vocals and basses and you know things like that, you want to kind of ride the audio. Uh, what this will do is this will like just smoothly open the gate, right? So what is this? Well, we're effectively turning these hats into shakers using a gate, and this is getting into I guess sound design and you know, creative usages of gates. And yeah, we can get some shakers in there. Right. And uh, yeah, the, your your use case is very important. Let's look at the hold. The hold is super important as well. Right. So I'm going to demonstrate this. We have this uh, this piece of audio here. And what we are going to be looking at are, is, you know, this is our imaginary line. This is our imaginary. This is the threshold. So this is the threshold. And you know, when the audio goes above this signal, right, it goes above this, the gate is open. And then when it goes uh, below, the gate is closed, open and closed. And the attack dictates how fast it will be when it opens. So what the gate is also doing is it's kind of getting rid of all these, it'll just kind of get rid of that. So we won't even need that anymore. It'll, it'll effectively kind of clean up that, uh, I guess, I don't know, what do you call that? Pre-ringing? I don't know. It gets rid of that. So keep that in mind. 
And that's why gates are so useful. They can make things sound punchy and tighter and all sorts of fun stuff. But yeah, let's look at this uh, a tiny bit closer. This is important. So we have this right here, and then we have our imaginary line. So open, right? Makes sense. Open, open, open. But then when it gets to here, it obviously goes below the threshold. So you'd think that it would close. And if it did, you would get some gnarly kind of distortion there. But because the hold, this right here, because that is a thing, it will just remain open. It'll give you, it'll give you like a grace period. And then, you know, when it starts up again, it'll be like, okay, okay. So yeah, just remain open. So the hold will effectively, you know, give you continuity, even though, you know, it, with a super fast release, this would open up. I'm going to give you an example of what this sounds like. And yeah, this is super important. So I'll double click that. Let's take a look at this here. Right, so we have you know something opening and closing very quickly, and if we adjust the hold, it will kind of you know stay open longer. Right, and it can get to be kind of gnarly, and this is useful. And it depends on what you are doing. So lower frequency content, uh, because the waveforms are so far apart, you'd want hold on like bases and stuff like that, just because they're so far apart. With higher frequency content, you can get away with a um, a hold like a faster you know hold or no hold at all. And it really depends on the release. So what's happening with a very fast hold is essentially it's acting kind of sort of like a compressor. So, you know, there is the line and, you know, it'll open, right? Once it goes above that, right? For this section right here, and then it'll start to release. And then this will happen and then it'll open again and then it'll start to release and then open. And, you know, it'll, in this kind of scenario, it will start to release and then it'll open again. So we have a bunch of those going on, like opening and closing really fast. During a transient, you might get some weird kind of distortion and issues there. So keep that in mind. So how do we how would we kind of dial this in? Well, I want a fast tech because it's highly, you know, like it's percussive, depending on what I'm going for. And I'll give it a bit of a hold here. I think the default works quite well. And I'll bring the threshold down to something more appropriate. I'll bring the floor all the way down. Right, so right, it's a very fast release, right? It's open and then it's, you know, closed very quickly, very, very quickly. Let's give it a longer release so things sound a bit more natural. Right, so we have right, that ring out of those hi-hats there, which is very cool and very useful. And I'll give you an example. I'll actually just show you what it looks like. I'll duplicate that. And then I will freeze. And then I will flatten. So yeah, check this out. We have just we've effectively changed the dynamic range and we can see it, we can hear it. And why would you want to do this? Well, this makes your mix sound a bit more cleaner. And again, like this by itself sounds pretty cool. But it's, it's a lot of a lot of hi hats, a lot of stuff going on in there. If we play this, right? It's more. It has it has more room. We're giving ourselves more headroom. It sounds like almost better, right? And maybe we should uh, dial this in a bit more, actually.
let's take a look uh, at what it looks like in the signalizer. Right, so what have we done? We have effectively removed those triangle-y things. I'll duplicate that and I will just uh, freeze and flatten this again and I'll just have it as a reference. So there we go. We have that reference there. So now, now let's listen to that. Oh, that, that gate's already on. Right? They are effectively the same peak volume, but we're getting more space in that mix there. And it'll just make our mix sound a little bit cleaner. And, you know, listening to it now. We're not even really missing any of uh, that chaos in there. All right, so let's take a look at this now. All right, let's add a compressor after this gate. I'm gonna name this uh, uh, gate. Okay, so yeah, there's that gate. It's named as such. And let's say I want to I want to, yeah, I want to compress this a bit, right? Because the gauge is just opening and closing. It's not doing anything necessarily to that uh, super fast transient there. But with a compressor, I can give it an attack and accentuate that. And it's going to require a little bit of playing around with it. So I just dro uh, dropped in a compressor, turned off the makeup gain, and I'm just going to bring the attack all the way down. And I'm going to go over to this view now. All right, so we've got uh, we've got some uh, compression going on there. I'll increase the ratio like four to one, and I'm not going to touch the output, the makeup gain. I don't want it to automatically, you know, do any makeup anything. I want to give it more of an attack, so that kind of peak will go through. See that difference there? It's subtle, but it'll give you a really cool result. All right, so let's uh, let's compare here. So I will duplicate that, and I will freeze, and then I will flatten, and we can see here that we are we are getting somewhere, and it's we're giving it more of a bite in the uh, transient um, situation here and you can hear it right so we're giving a little bit more life back and I'll, I'll just let you uh, listen to the original there this is the original And uh, yeah, this would be um, gate. Be the gate and uh, compressor, or the gat and compressor. Probably should name it. Oops. So we have the original, and then we have the gate, and then we have the gate and compressor. Right, just for attitude and things like that. Let's take a look at this right here. Right, so we can add a gate to this, and that's all well and good. This will essentially, um, it'll just kind of get rid of the the tail end stuff. Right, so this we don't need that. We want it to be we want it to be punchy and awesome. Right. This is lower end material, right? So we might want a longer hold.
And yeah, we can get a really nice effect by giving uh, it more of an attack. Kind of uh, affecting that transient there. What does that sound like? Quick and easy. All right, what does that sound like all together? All right, so moral of the story, gates are very uh, useful. Let's go over to this kick here. So the kick has like this weird wompy part here. And we can get rid of that with the uh, compressor, essentially. We'll uh, bring down the... Well, not enable, will disable the makeup, uh, uh, automatic makeup gain there. I'll go into this window here, and I'm going to set the attack to 0, 0.0. So when you're working with compressing in this way, uh, you should uh, get the attack down to 0 before you do anything, um, because that'll give you an idea of what to listen for, and like you can kind of hear the changes. And then with experience, you'll kind of understand what's going on a little bit later. So later, as in, you know, as you as your journey continues, right? So there's that kick there. We've got that gnarly stuff going on. Let's actually just bring down the threshold. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it more of a click because I like that. And that will allow us to kind of dial in that clicky kick thing going on. Make our kick sound more punchy. Right? And I'll give us more of a release because the compressor is kind of triggering twice. You don't want that. Right? Now it's smooth. With a fast release, we get distortion. Not too good. But with a, if it's too slow, it won't recover in time. So you want to really dial that in. Okay, so there's that. Let's uh, let's get let's get that ratio to you know four to one just to just to go crazy. All right, I'm going to increase the attack, and this will allow that that click of that kick to come through. I like doing this. All right, that's a little little too much, but I'll just bring the threshold up. And the ratio will bring that down. Right? Very, very cool. All right, so we have that right there. I'm going to give you an example of what that looks like. We'll duplicate that, and then this will be freezed and uh, flattened. And... Did I? No, I didn't. Did I? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, so <laughs> there is that, but it's doing a weird thing. What the heck is going on here? Let me try that again. I will duplicate. Like, obviously, that's being affected, and then I'll freeze, and then I will flatten. Okay, there we go. So there's that. We get, you know, the same kind of peak going on, but then the volume of the rest of the kick is down, down below. So this is just with the, uh, with the compressor. All right. Let's take it uh, maybe a step further, All right? Because there's still that, that stuff going on right after that kick. I want to get rid of that. How would you get rid of that? Well, we would use the gate, of course. Let's actually let's just let's just add it to this one. So this is the gate. Drop the gate in there, and yeah, the threshold is kind of arbitrary. And we will give the release a bit. Get that release down there. And wait, eh, got the 
wrong thing. So this will happen. <laughs> You'll have the wrong thing uh, soloed. Okay, there we go. So now we're hearing what's going on. And yeah, let's uh, get that attack fast. Right, and we can even get rid of that. But we want it. We want to preserve that attack there. Right, so we've effectively gotten rid of that that thing, that bump at the end there. I'll give it more of a release. We, we're, we're kind of dialing it in. We can get rid of it almost. It's very surgical. Right, so there's that. I'm going to duplicate that. And then I will freeze. And then I will flatten. And then there we go. So see how we can really kind of change change things up. Right, so there's all sorts of uh, use cases. This kick is now kind of, I guess, tighter is the word. And I'll get rid of that gate there. So this is, you know, uh, compressor and gate, right? There we go. So yeah, let's take a let's take a listen to this. Right? Doesn't sound like much, but altogether, it uh, sounds like something neat. So from here, we can let's get into just briefly, maybe um, let's say compression extreme forms of compression uh, maybe as an effect so and this is your, your mileage may vary let's leave the makeup gain on i've dropped it on the compressor and gate and i can just bring that down and i'm using very high uh, ratio infinity to one fast attack and i'm going to play around with the release Right, so fast release, we actually get distortion. Right, so we're getting some hefty compression there with the makeup gain. And we can do something called New York compression, which is we have the wet dry here. We can have the dry mixed with the wet to get a kind of a, I guess, a completely new uh, sound. This is used quite a bit. Um, it's more outside of the scope of this video i just kind of wanted to kind of show you uh what could be done with that so you know changed the uh kick in question uh made it more you know beefy and yeah that is you know um heavy let's call it heavy heavy compression um what else Using the limiter, uh, limiters are not just used on the master. They are used in a variety of things. A limiter is essentially for safety, but it's also, you know, to, when I say safety, I mean I, I have it on the master because it'll prevent things from going over a certain level so it doesn't clip in OBS. But with the limiter, what we can do is, yeah, just squish, the heck out of things. It's it's a very specialized form of compression by bringing down the ceiling, right? And uh, no, actually, I'll just bring the gain up, right? So if you want more of an attitude of your kick, this is like you know this is still uh, dynamics processing. It's just squishing it. It's called a sausage, and this is valid in a lot of, uh, in a lot of, I guess, uh, sound design. And a better use would be, you know, on the hi hats that we have processed here, right? If we wanted to give those hi hats a little bit more attitude, but make them seem to preserve the gate, but have a little bit more attitude, we can bring the gain up. Right, and this you would have to uh, compensate with uh, some, you know, volume here.
right? And this would uh, beef up the sound uh, if you see uh, that you would need to do that. So it's it's all a neat kind of uh, journey. Um, let's let's actually get those and the compressor gate. Right, let's uh let's glue these all together. So this is got the uh, gate and compress this. Okay, all right. Let's get all these together, and I will do this so no one gets confused here. So we have uh, the compressed kick here. Oh wait, no, I want the compressor and gate kick. Right there, we go. So this is the kick here. And these would be the uh, hi hats, and I want to get uh, that bass in there first. So let's just get this uh, put together. And that might be a little bit too loud. Bring that down. All right, and that's the gate and compress. So we're getting uh, some, uh, you know. Lots of dynamics with that. Right, very cool. Uh, let's. Um, I'm uh, selecting this first one, holding Shift, and then I'm going to right click and then group these. So these are effectively grouped. Called uh, uh, track bus. I call it bus or bus. I don't know. I call it. Sometimes I just use two S's. Like I like to picture it as a bus. There's, yeah, there probably isn't two S's, but whatever. Anyway, so let's get uh, the glue compressor. This is a specialized compressor that will take all of this, you know, all this information, and it will, you know, put it into a cohesive form. Right, so you have all this stuff going on here. Let's get the glue compressor in there. And typically with these kinds of compressors, you don't want to be you don't want to do any more than five dB of gain reduction. Um, I mean those aren't necessarily like rules rules, but it's a general guideline. So let's bring that threshold down. Right. We bring the threshold down. Right, we get that clickiness of that there. We go uh, uh, 0 0.01, so a faster attack, which still allows a lot of stuff to come through. Right, but we have a we have a thing here with a needle, so the release needs to be set appropriately. Even with very fast releases, there's some clever stuff going on under the hood here. It will not distort. I mean, it's very difficult to make it distort. All right, so we're getting some gain reduction there. All right, so we have to get the makeup gain to, you know, we're reducing, we need to add some gain in there as well. Right, so notice how it's just making everything kind of fit together. This is bus compression, and this is basically what the glue compressor is for. We'll select oversampling. Oversampling is important for clipping. A little bit of soft clipping is very useful. It adds uh, what the original hardware unit would do. So yeah, there is that and you know all sorts of things that you can do with these um processing units you know <laughs> achieving a good sound it's like you're using a combination of different uh, dynamics processors we're strictly talking about dynamics processors we're using different kinds in different combinations you know the glue compressor will kind of you know uh 
get everything kind of cohesive and we'll kind of ride the audio and then say, you know, a limiter will catch everything that uh, the glue compressor doesn't catch and then give us an overall volume. So we're getting a little bit of gain reduction there. And now I'll, I'll just uh, group those and we can listen to what they're doing. Right, and this is roughly the same volume, but it just sounds like it's, uh, you know, glued together. Right, we see this chaos happening here. Like, look at this uh, this track right here. I'll call it. I'll just, you know, I'll highlight it because you know that's what I do. Um, look at the the volume readout here. It's this, look at that. So, without the glue compressor. I will do that. Right? Left and right, it's kind of off kilter. It's kind of bouncing around. But with this on, glue compressor and the limiter, making it a lot more, you know, put together. Like it's one track. And, you know, do you miss any of these things? Right? This is, you know, why you would kind of take away and reduce. Because the reason why, I, I think, is it gives you the flexibility of more processing down the line. Let's say if you wanted to have a reverb on these hi-hats to fill up the space a little bit more, you're not getting that wishy-washy like triangle stuff or you know, background stuff that would just further be exacerbated by all the processing down the line, you are getting kind of a, a cleaner signal. You're kind of cleaning it up so you can work with it later. And this will save you um, some headaches. And no mixing yet. It's all, it's all volume, all dynamics, all gain. So keep that in mind. It's an exceptionally important tool. Anyway, that's, uh, that's enough of that... Um, the elementary refresher, I guess. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Hope you learned stuff and I'll see you in the next one.